God glory, honor, and praise. This time we will have our opening prayer, which will be followed immediately by our opening scripture. We do ask that you stand for both. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for just allowing us another day to wake up to come and worship you, Father God. Father God, I ask you, Lord, to just forgive us for our sins, seen and unseen, Father God. Father God, I just lift up the service on today, Father God, that you will have your way, Father yes, God. God. We already know that you're here, Father God, so we invite you just to have your way, Father yes, God, God, through God. each and every yes, person, yes, through yes, each God. and every row, Father God. Yes, my God. Move, Father God, as you will move, Father God. Yes. Touch where touch needs to be touched, yes, Father God. Yes, God. Those, Father God, that's lacking, Father God, in their faith, Father God, or lacking wherever it is in the area, Father God, where the enemy might have them to want to just give up, Father God. You know all about yes. it, Father God. So I thank you, Lord, that this is a house of deliverance, Father yes. God. A house yeah. where, Father God, our lives can be changed, yes. Father God. This is a house, Father God, where your word has been taught and not sugarcoated, yes. Father God. Yes. That we stand, Father God, on your word, Father God. And that, Father God, we can come boldly to the throne of grace, Father God. So, Father God, I ask you, Lord, to just stir up the gift in this ministry, Father yes. God. Stir up the gift, Father God, those that's dormant, Father God. Those, Father God, that's just sitting here, Father God, move, Father God, shake. Yes. I declare a shaking, Father God, in Otomas Christian you, Center. Yes. I declare, Father God, deliverance in Otomas yes. Christian Center. Yes. Yes. I ask you, Lord, to just put fire under Woo! all of our feet, Father God. Yes. Father God, let us go to another level. Let us not be Thank stagnated. You, I declare, Father God, I decree, Father God, that there will not be a stagnated spirit in this ministry, Father God. I lift up our pastors, Father God, both of them, Father God, that you will just continue to impart into them. You'll continue to stir up your gift in them, Father God. You'll continue to just touch. You'll continue to meet the need, Father God. So I speak a special blessing even over each and every one that's represented here, Father God. That you would just touch, that you would do something this day, this week, this year, this month, Father God. Yeah, that they will know that your hand was upon Hallelujah. them, Father God. Yes. That they will know it was truly you, Father God. Yes. That they will know, Father God, that you are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And that you are a big God and you like doing big things, Father God. So I just... Lift up, Father God, our service, each and every song, Father God, each and every praise, Father God, just each and every person, Father God, I just lift them up once again, Father God, and I decree these things in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ephesians, I'm reading from Ephesians 6 and 5. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Servants, be obedient to those according to the flesh are your masters with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as to Christ not in the way of service only when your eyes as men pleasers but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart amen 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 amen, amen. amen. praise God we're gonna go ahead we're gonna praise God like we have we're going to get some little undignified. That's all right. That's all right. We're going to get a little undignified today. We're just going to go ahead and have a good time. <laughs>
We're free to worship. We're free to praise. And because of all that Christ did, I love it. Oh, the little song from little, years ago. So this is an oldie but goodie, but it's okay. Words apply so much today. Right even now. Yeah. 
closest person to you. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter who it is. Don't allow him to hinder your praise. Because your worship is where you're releasing everything. Amen. I mean everything. Yes. And I know you, you it, the thing for me is when I if I get into a disagreement with my daughter I'm not focused when I come here to get what I need to give to God and to get what I need to get from him. So Pastor Ann was right on it when she said worship worship should be a thing of pleasure. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. He is there with you, 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 when you worship. Mm -hmm. So if you take 10 seconds for yourself, for your situation, for whatever you believe God for, if you put God first, just stand up and take 10 seconds and give God some real worship. Come on, everybody stand up with me, please. I'm not mad at nobody. I love everybody. Everybody in this house, amen. Thank you, so let's amen. just take 10 seconds and give God worship because we shouldn't have to push into that atmosphere. Abuelita, if you siéntate, please. Siéntate. Siéntate. If she wants to, she only if you want to. I don't, I don't. She's almost, she was halfway there. Yes, she was. That's because I didn't want her to. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the conscious of the, 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 the elders in the house, the wisdom, the salt in the house. So if you'll take 10 seconds and just worship God because it's about all the things that you're going to receive. You guys don't realize that the last time we were only halfway there. He wants you to come all the way to him. Mm. All the way. Don't come halfway into the water because you don't have wash yourself. Come in here. <laughs> come in here and get some anointing. Come in here and get some worship. Just take a few minutes and worship God. Just let him know how much you appreciate him. Don't care about how loud you need to be, how soft you need to be, but let it out because you have so much to you have so much that Christ is going to give you when you release it. Because if you holding on to everything when you come in here Sunday after Sunday, you're never able to receive if your hands aren't open. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So come on, Hallelujah. Yeah, they may sign. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory, 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 Praise God. Have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 
in the presence of Woo! God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Okay, I got smart and decided I was going to do something different, and the Lord said you had to write a song already. And I was just being hard headed and going to do it my way. Nobody ever gets that part, right? Y'all never just decide you're going to do it your way, and even though God told you to do it a different way, yes. you just going to go ahead and do it your way because that's what you do it your way. And that's the way I wanted to do it. <laughs> and it's an old song that we used to sing when we were young. And as we were, as I was um, I'm getting prepared right now, the Lord is saying, you know, don't give up. Amen. Don't back off. Keep moving forward. Why? Because there's a, there is a reward. And <laughs> this, 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 this little song we used to sing. You remember? <laughs> and actually this is this actually is my testimony as well. The song just simply says, I don't feel no waste time. I've come to
when they started talking about all these different people yeah. and the faith that they had and how much they trusted God. And this was way before Jesus came. Mm -hmm. And so they are witnesses to how great God is and how good God is. And so because of them, we can, we should lay aside everything that is causing us to, to stumble or not be able to make it. We should lay it aside. Let's see, what is the... the um, what is that amplified up there? Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne the testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily or deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us. And let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you get ready, let me say it this way, when a runner prepares for a race, have you noticed that they have all the, you know, they don't wear like jeans and a sweatshirt when they get ready to run. Mm -hmm. You know, they're in a race. They don't have on jeans, a sweatshirt, and combat boots unless you're in the army and then you, uh, that's a whole other story. But, <laughs> When you are a runner about to enter, when the runner is about to enter the race, they put on as little as they can get away with. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they can move faster. Mm -hmm. They're not encumbered or they're not held back by the weight of the, the clothes that they're in or the weight 
of whatever. The clothes now, they're making them so that they dry as fast as they get wet. So, so I'm not, they're not being held back because of the weight of their own sweat. Mm -hmm. You with me on this? Yeah. So this is telling us that as we are entering this Christian race, we need to lay aside everything that's going to hold us back. That, that weight that holds you down, that weight that, it, that keeps you from moving mm -hmm. forward. That weight, what is that weight? Well, that is this, that sin which so readily and cleverly clings to you. That sin that you don't, you look at it and say, well, it ain't that bad. You know, that, or everybody else is doing this and everybody else is doing that. So I should be able to do whatever, right? That, that's, how we, that's how we look at it, right? You know, they're doing that, so why can't I? Guess what? You've been bought with a price. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Jesus hugged on the cross and bled and died for you. Yes. So you. your personal relationship with Jesus is such that you can't do everything everybody else does. Yeah. And I can be perfect. I, I can tell you that, you know, I was, I always end up telling my business, don't I? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, Lord. Okay. I couldn't do what everybody else did. Yeah. Why? Because God didn't allow it. I was with a little group, a group of people that, you know, they did a little shoplifting from time to time. I was with them. They lived in a supposedly safe, sanctified household too, okay? You know, their parents were ministers and and I, they, they did some shoplifting. They would tell me how to do it and, you know, okay, with y'all now. I ended up sitting up in security. <laughs> <laughs> Took out over there on Kiefer Boulevard. <laughs> and Ola Bell Haynes had to come get me. Oh. No. Hmm. <laughs> Stupid was one word I do remember. <laughs> <laughs> and she really didn't have to say it because... I already knew it. Why could they get away with it, but I couldn't? God had a plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the plan and purpose for my life was not that. Mm -hmm. There are things that other people do and get away with, and it's like, hey, it's but God said, no, not you. Why? Because I have something for you to do. I have something that I need for you to do, and that doesn't equate with what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. There are times, though, that God, when you go through that, whatever it is, or whatever you did, and you got snatched up behind it, that God will take that and use it for His glory. Mm -hmm. Ain't that cool, though? That's the thing about it. Even though you mess up, God will take that and use it. Yes. For His glory. Mm -hmm. Hey! Okay. Alright. I... Okay, he can... Does he want to help me? Okay, Romans, let's see, how is it? So let us lay aside every weight. Now, what I need to do is start being sure that I'm laying aside the sin and laying, like getting rid of all of that. How do I need to do that? Romans 12 and 2. I've been mean, watching just tell you to do it and then not take it out. Right? That, that, that's, Romans 12 and 2 says, do not be conformed. Let's see, I'll go over here. Do not be conformed to this world or this age. Fashioned after and adapted to external superficial customs. Mm. Don't be going into everything that everybody else is doing. What? But be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Mm. That means I gotta change the way I think by its new ideals and its new attitudes so that you make my baby. <laughs> you may prove, come on, come on. So that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. You need to be transformed. Your mind needs to be transformed. You got that? Your mind needs to be transformed. How do you do that? You get into God's Word. You start to study. You start to listen and learn more and yes. more about who God is and what God requires. You start renewing your mind by changing your attitude. You start renewing your mind 
by putting off that old custom and that old habit. You don't hang out with everybody just because I, I can hang out with everybody. I don't sit around with everybody because I can't sit around with everybody because everybody ain't comfortable in my presence. Amen. And you know why they're not comfortable in my presence? Because I got the presence of the Lord in me. Amen. So everybody's not comfortable with me hanging out. Amen. And that's okay. That don't mean I don't love them. That doesn't mean I don't care about them. I do want a relationship so that you can see the Christ in me. I've got to have some love. Okay, let me say that real quick. I gotta show love. In the midst of everything else, I need to show love. Okay? You ready to go back? Okay. <laughs> the renewing of your mind. Well, but my past, every time I start moving forward, somebody tells me about who I was. Yes, mm -hmm. it's true. Somebody it's true. starts telling me about how I was. Mm -hmm. Somebody starts telling me that you can't accomplish nothing. Somebody starts telling me that you can't get rise above your current yes. circumstance. Come on, Steph. Come on. Somebody starts telling me that you can't do all that God has called you to do because you're not smart enough. You're not good enough. Mm -hmm. You're not tall enough. You're not skinny enough. You're not fat enough. You're not... They start telling you all of those things because of your past. Yes. And and if you think that this, this is a new thing, let me look at uh, John 1 and 46 real quick. Because, see, Jesus came out of Nazareth, right? That, that's what I'm telling you. He grew up in Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem, but he grew up in Nazareth. And you got it? Nathaniel, who actually became one of his disciples later, says, to uh, his brother, can any good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> can, say, can anything good come out of Del Paso Heights? Can anything <laughs> good come out of Oak Park? Can anything good come off G Parkway? Can anything good come out of South Central? Can anything good come out of Compton? Can anything good come out of wherever you might be from? So if somebody, this is where Jesus was from. <laughs> he was from Nazareth. And his brother, uh, Nathaniel's brother said, come and see. Amen. <laughs> can anything good? Yeah. Come, and see. come and see. See, I can show you better than I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I can show you I've changed more than I can tell you. I can, tell, I can show you that, I, that my past is no longer my future. Okay. My past does not di dictate my future. Mm -hmm. I came out the heights, actually on the far side of the heights, somewhere between the heights and Rio Linda. And, and but God, when God has His hand on you, you're going, you're going to do, you're oh, going yeah. to accomplish what He wants you to. Mm -hmm. You're going to rise above everything everyone has ever told you. And, and then, but then they keep on and they keep on and they keep on telling you what you can't do and what you are not going to accomplish. But let me remind you of this: Second uh, Corinthians five and seventeen. Let me just go ahead and read. You got it already. Hey. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. He is brand new. So once you have stepped into Christ, you're brand new. You're not the same as you used to be. So you got a whole new future. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? Yeah. Have I lost anybody yet? No, no. Okay. All right. All things are passed away. The old, the pre previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's dead. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay. The only way it'll still exist is if you keep resurrecting it. The yeah. only way it's going to exist is if you keep on going back to the graveyard, picking that thing, digging that hole up, and pulling it back out. It's dead. It's gone. That old stuff has passed away. It doesn't exist anymore. Can you, can you, and, and how many of y'all want to go back out there to the graveyard and start digging, you know? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you keep on resurrecting stuff that should be dead. <laughs> Why? Because somebody said you couldn't. Because somebody said you have no hope. Somebody said you have no future. Somebody said, forget what they said. God said, you are a brand new creature. Yes, you new amen. Creature. In me, you're new. You're brand new. To those that just went through the baptism, when you went down, that's when the old passed away. When you came back up, that's when the new, that new creation in Christ was formed. Brand new. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hey. <laughs> so, 
you're brand new. Yes, amen. So that you got you got to walk in this thing now, right? You got to walk in this thing. So and then you know somebody's come up and they gonna come tell you that you can't do it, and they gonna try to push you back off in it, right? They gonna they gonna. I'm telling you now, the devil is going to do that. He's oh, going yes. to try to pull you right back to where you were. Yes. So. First Corinthians ten thirteen. Everybody's in, in Tuesday and Thursday Bible study. Been seeing this for a minute. There has no temptation. No. <laughs> Taking you, but such as is common to man. But God, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you were able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Amen. In other words, when the temptation is risen back up in front of your face, and you start looking at it, and you say, you know, it wasn't that bad. You know, I could, it, it, well, you know, I, I could actually, you know, it, it ain't too bad. Just, just a little bad. Not all the way bad, but, you know, it, it's, you know, you start looking at it and start to try to justify it if you want to. But, uh, but when you're a new creation, you're looking at it like, nah, let me make a little bit of it. God will make a way for you to get out. Yes, amen. <laughs> okay? Before you get all caught up, God will make a way for you to get out. Somebody come along, hey, you want to ride with me to the store? Yes. <laughs> I need to get up out of here right now. Yes. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Why? Because right now this is this is a little this is getting a little much for me to be able to deal with. Let me go ahead and make a exit stage left. <laughs> Quickly. God will provide a means for you to get out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Yes. So you don't have to fall back in. If you want to stay out, you can stay out. Because you're a new creation. You're not your past doesn't dictate your future. Amen. 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 Um hmm. But okay, so if I mess up and I don't get out in time and I mess up, okay. There's a difference between a mess up and a choice. Okay, you don't understand that, right? Okay. First Corinthians 10, uh, wait a minute, 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sin, if you don't mess up, okay, let me see. All right, let me go over here for this one. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, we're talking to the Lord, He is faithful yes. and just. who is true to His nature and promises and will forgive our sins. Mm, amen. He'll wash it away. He'll dismiss our lawlessness and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord. From everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. Mm. If it's against, if you go to God, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. Please forgive me. I did, I did what you told me not to do. Could you forgive me, Lord? I, I repent. I, I'm walking away from it. Help me. Strengthen me. Forgive me. And he will. It, it's really hard, huh? It sounds. It sounds. That sounds too easy, huh? Sounds like you need to go and do the twelve hail marys and and do do the penance on and all of that <laughs> stuff. But <laughs> what that say? Confess. If you confess, you, if you confess your sins, he's All faithful to forgive us. Just forgive us. <laughs> he will forgive you. Yes. It's and remember what I think. What I said last week. I think it was last week, wasn't it? When I said, when you ask God to forgive you, He does. Yes. He cast it into the sea yes. to remember it no more. And again, some people go out there doing that uh, deep sea diving to pull Scuba it out of the sea. Scuba and and that, that God has already thrown it in the sea to remember it no more. You go jump out there in the sea, do scuba diving, and get your and pull your sin back. Lord, I'm sorry that I committed this sin. And he, he's like, I put it out there That's already. True. Amen. How'd it come back? <laughs> Y'all went scuba diving. You know, you got people going to the graveyard, resurrecting the dead self, other people going scuba diving, pulling their sails back. Y'all doing way too much work. <laughs> okay. But God will forgive you. And